Oh my gosh, how amazing is Madeira, you guys? Uh, this is insanely gorgeous. I'm so grateful to be here. Um, I'm so grateful to be I'm on the stage with all four of these wonderful Bitcoiners and these musicians who are using their time, treasure, and talent to help people get their hearts up, help people understand Bitcoin, and make the world a better place with their gifts and dreams. So I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves one by one and let them tell you who they are and how they got here. And then I'm going to start asking some cool questions. So thanks for having us. And and I'm DJ Valerie Beloved, by the way. So aloha. <laughs> you want to go first, Tim? I'm Tim James. I'm the co-founder of Rock Mafia. Rock and rock. Well, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Get a little bit more, Tim. We okay. <laughs> What's Rock Mafia? Rock Mafia is an independent uh, music creation company, basically a song company that does artist development and music production for, you know, all, most artists, you know, we will work with anybody as long as we're excited, you know, so awesome. there's the, ga the gateway is talent. If you've got the talent or you have the audience, we're, we're interested. Okay, cool. Awesome. Welcome. Hey, I'm Tip and Um, I started off as a analyst, equities analyst and investor and found out about Bitcoin and decided there was nothing more important in my life to do than get the message about Bitcoin out there um, and try to use my experience in finance and um, help people understand why the system is broken. Um, a lot of what I do isn't really traditional music, music or musician. Um, I basically write like uh, spoken word stuff, um, write speech and try to put really awesome beats and really powerful visuals around it and try to help get the message of Bitcoin. How cool is that? That is cool. <laughs> My name is Theo Katzman. I'm a singer-songwriter. Uh, I'm a rock and roll dude. And uh, I also play in a band called Wolfpeck, which is a funk band. Um, and uh, I'm down here because uh, the miracle of Bitcoin. Um, I read The Price of Tomorrow by Jeff Booth, which completely blew my mind into smithereens. Then I went down the rabbit hole as I was writing a bunch of songs and I ended up writing um, an album called Be The Wheel, which is a uh, sort of veiled prayer for Bitcoin and for our world. And uh, I've been touring that album um, across the world this last year. And the funny thing is none of my fans know what the hell I'm talking about, but all of you do. So this is my uh, sort of official coming out party. I am and have been a Bitcoiner and I'm here for the revolution. Yes. Yeah, brother. Cheers. Um, I'm a bit nervous introducing myself after Thea. <laughs> um, my name is Joe Martin. Um, I'm a singer-songwriter from Northwest uh, England. And uh, I've been writing songs for the past sort of 10 years. I've been touring around the UK and more recently the States and Europe a little bit. And uh, I released my debut album sort of last year. And yeah, and more recently been releasing my music on these value for value platforms that are, are just coming out um, that are kind of uh, mixing the open protocols of Bitcoin Lightning and RSS together. So people that are listening to content can easily send value back to their favorite creators. And uh, that's something I'm really stoked about and really passionate about. So yeah, I'm sure we'll get into that. Welcome, I'm so glad. Well, you got the mic and we're talking about value for value and my name's Val, so let's start with that. <laughs> um, How's it been going for you? I interviewed you for Bitcoin for Peace about a year ago. Yeah, you're the first podcast I was on. Really? Oh, dude, awesome. So how has your life changed with Value for Value as an artist versus using normal fiat, like with your audience and with yourself? Yeah, it's just been incredible. These past sort of 18 months have been pretty wild and it's just crazy to see how fast it's all moving. Um, but it's like the, the, the thing I try and get across to, to people that don't really understand what the space is about is that it, there's kind of not many things in life that um, have no downside, right? Very few things. And I don't try and sell people on the idea of Bitcoin particularly. That's not my specialty. But what I'm trying to just kind of get across is that um, these value for value platforms, they're just one more place to upload your music uh, and it's free to upload, um, say on something like Wavelake. But people can send you value back straight away, instantly. Uh, final settlement, peer to peer, like borderless. Um, and when I try and get that across to people, uh, a lot of people don't believe me because uh, like, you know, when you want to put your music on Spotify or Apple or anything like that, you, ha you have to sort of pay a distributor 
to get it up there like a middleman to put it on these platforms you're paying them and then you know you don't ever see anything back normally from spotify or any of these big streaming platforms unless you're racking up tens or hundreds of millions of streams whereas with value for value you can, you can upload for free and you can start getting paid straight away so it's almost like the opposite right and when i kind of try and explain that people are like well what's the catch and you're like there is no catch <laughs> um so it's just this beautiful thing that this technology is enabling and and uh I'm just excited to see where it's going. You were mentioning, obviously, you know, using peer-to-peer is obviously taking away the middleman, the distributor. We still need to have a marketing arm of our music. So it's not just like, oh, cool, I'm doing peer-to-peer and value for value. I'm going to be a billionaire now. Like, how do you still work on your your connection and building your audience, you know, and, and navigating that part? Yeah, so I'm trying to kind of like, straddle both things but i keep getting the more i'm doing in value for value it's kind of sucking me in more and more but um i don't want to like over promise with what this can can do at the time being i think it will really grow in the next few years but i don't want to oversell it uh, to kind of new people coming in looking at the space saying you know you're gonna this can be like your full-time revenue stream because i think that's kind of over promising um you know i think we should under promise and try and over deliver on what it could do um, but yeah, like, I don't want to make any false promises. I think, you know, I'm not trying to discourage people that are going into value for value full time and trying to make it the full time thing, but just be a bit cautious of that. It should be a supplementary income stream. And, and like I said, it's better than nothing. Like on these other platforms, you don't really see any return at all. And I think if anyone should be getting money for the art that they produce, it should be the artist, right? Not, not a giant platform. So. Yeah, totally. I know I was thinking, I think we might've talked about this on the podcast, but you know the 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 friction for every time you listen to a song and going oh I gotta remember to zap you or send you some sats you know whether you're listening to a podcast um, I was always wondering I'm like wouldn't it be interesting at the end of the month so instead of having this. yeah instead of having a subscription that you're just like cool I'm paying my ten bucks a month to Spotify or whatever at the end of the month you look at your consumption of how many minutes of Joe's music did I listen to how many fan centric say it again Sorry. that's like the fan centric model yeah, yeah. But, but then at the end so let's say you've got a ten dollar budget so instead of giving it to spotify at the end it's going to just automatically go to all these different artists and you know whether it's a filmmaker a documentary a, a book or an article that you read and then it just automatically will go i i has we need to build this guy so pay attention and so yeah so let's do this during the, yeah, during thanks, the pandemic thanks joe <laughs> yeah, yeah keep going well you know. I, tr- I tried yeah. to uh i actually like lost my kind of lost my mind during the pandemic and uh ended up I, I have a friend who is a, a vice president of a large tech company and I told him a lot of people had had that idea and we we actually started to build it but uh it was ultimately um the the like model didn't in the legacy system it didn't it didn't end up being much better than the payouts for the regular streaming things but I think if you were to um, explore that with these rails, it it kind of changes because you're you're actually getting sats. You know, you're you're getting paid in in Bitcoin, which is total game changer. Um, and I, I just wanted to add to this that we artists are are using these uh, these large networks, all the social media networks that basically won the network effect of like Instagram, TikTok, um, you know, Facebook, somewhat. We have to use these platforms because it's where everyone is um, in terms of building our following. But it's it's quite frustrating because you can see that the platforms are working less and less uh, in terms of you getting in touch with your actual audience these days because they keep seemingly moving towards more advertisement, which they sort of have to because they're these fiat networks, which sort of necessitates that they use the ad model. But you sort of like, you basically have to build 10x the size of your actual following. Like I reach a tenth of my fans. And it's like, wow, could I just reach like those 10,000 people and actually sell them like $10 of something annually? It's like, you know, because Spotify will send me the information. Like you have, you know, 5,000 people who for whom you are their number one listener. And it's like, Oh my who God, who the hell are they? Who the hell are they and where the hell do they live? And could I, I'm not going to spam them, but like, 
I'd write them a custom something or I do, you know, it's like there'd be all these ways to exchange. Um, like people want that. And uh, it's very exciting that it, it's seemingly like we're at the beginning of building those rails. Yeah, it's totally, I think we're really close. Yeah, go ahead, Tip. One thing I wanted to add, I went to a pitch competition yesterday. Um, if you guys were there, um, there was a company that is building on Nostra called Satellite. And what they do is they're building um, a way for everyone to build their own communities on Nostra. So not just your own profile where you're sharing notes, you own the notes, but you can actually build a, um, think of like a Discord and you own that entire server, you own that entire Discord, you own all the events, all the assets, all the notes, um, all the relationships, all the messages that you have with your fans. So when you're a musician, it's not just you, it's a whole team and you're build, trying to build a community, you're trying to build a network. And with Nostra, you own all of that. So like, I think the company's just getting started. It's called Satellite. Um, keep an eye out for them. Cool. Oh my God, I love that. Well, okay, Keith, let's keep talking about that because I think that, you know, with Fountain, and I'm glad to hear this with Satellite, like, it's so neat to see somebody set you, or anywhere, even in anywhere, a Nostar, you're like, ooh, thanks for sending me 10 sats because I put this thing up. So it creates that intimacy, and that's what fans love. They're like, oh, my gosh, yay, Tip sent me back a, a smiley face, or Theo said high five, and people are like, fuck yeah, I want to keep, like, supporting you. So... So it gives us an opportunity to have the dance. And we were just talking, Tim, about as a DJ, you know, I never know what I'm going to play. Like I have an idea, but it's like, okay, who's on the dance floor? Who's doing this thing? And so you get to go back and forth and you're like, oh, that person's digging this. I'm going to keep going that way. And so as somebody, as an artist, we want to be able to engage and connect and deeply understand our, our fans so that we can deliver what they need. And this Bitcoin is obviously create like who would have thought that bitcoin is going to create an opportunity for intimacy with artists and creators and their fans i think that's super amazing so do you want to talk i know you're so excited that's my dream that's yeah, my dream keep going go i know yeah live the dream baby um okay so tim you work with like some of the biggest a-list artists on planet earth how are they i have an orange domino theory and so the orange domino theory to me, and I think strategically for all of us to think about this, if we are interested in orange pilling the world, right? Who's got the biggest audiences and who's most prime to get their orange domino go like this and get their whole downstream audiences going, oh, whoa, Tim said Bitcoin is cool. And Theo said Bitcoin's awesome. I need to learn and obviously teach them and understand so how is it in the the Hollywood scene and the big music LA scene? Like who's excited and understanding Bitcoin? Uh, it's it's a process, um, but I will say that there's more hodlers than you think, and they're not necessarily bragging about it. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. How many times have you like had a session with someone, and next thing you know, I basically. I don't even know how to talk about. I wish I could figure out something else to talk about other than Bitcoin, but I just, I just can't. I feel like I have an octopus on my face. People are like, "How's it going?" I'm like, "It's pretty good. Everything's great." If I could figure out how to get this octopus on my face, and we could talk about something else. So yeah, in terms of being in a session, there's a lot of musicians um, and artists who are, who are. I mean, often the, musicians and artists understand this because they have open minds. The problem I'm finding is that nobody really knows how to talk about it because a lot of times it can be very alienating for people. So, I mean, I'm a total, you know, total Bitcoin maximalist and I haven't mentioned it at all explicitly to my fans, but I have people coming and singing every word to these songs and I, and they're like, what are you talking about? And I want, I don't really know how to, I don't really know what to say, to be honest. So that's what I'm hoping to learn this weekend. Yeah. I think um, as well, like I was just saying to Theo before that um, when people ask me about how this stuff works, I, I, I want to, like, I like when Jack Mallis says, there's Bitcoin the asset, there's Bitcoin the network. Obviously, they're completely reliant on each other, but it, it's with what we're doing here, it's good to focus on Bitcoin, the network and the utility it can provide for what we're trying to achieve. And just forget about the asset for a second because people are like, oh, is it, it going to go up? Is it going to go down? They're talking about that all the time. It doesn't matter. It's like this can provide a superior user experience and finally put the artists in a position of control to take back control of their work and be rewarded for it by their biggest fans, which is 
you know, it's, it just feels so right and that's how it should be. And I think it, in a way, the technology needs to get there and it's nearly there where we, we can just show people how it works and they can experience it. And once they experience it for the first time, you don't need to talk about it anymore. You know what I mean? You don't need to try and convince them when they see that first sat come in for their music or when they see that they can just tap a button and send the sats to their favorite artist and they know that they got all that money, then it's like game changer. And, and have you, so, and thank you for this. And it's super true because once you actually touch it and feel it and you're like, what's, like you said, what's the catch? It's like, there's no catch, this shit works. And so with your artists and the folks that you've been working with, um, is anybody using value for value in, in Hollywood and the big artists? How can we, can we support them and help them? There's a big movement. So, you know, I'm glad you brought up the, I'm glad you brought up the network because I was at dinner explaining it to someone that, you know, the way music is accounted for is very slow. So something that can globally settle every 10 minutes is, is like completely, it's like, it, it doesn't even apply comparatively to, and we've been making progress. If you think about, you know, I've been doing this a long time since I was 17 years old professionally. So I, 20, 25 plus years. Uh, and, um, you know, I think of, you know, getting paid twice a year was the beginning of it. Now we're getting paid monthly, which is great if if you're not in the major label system. Uh, and uh, so there's incremental changes going forward. Um, but this is this is the thing that's going to blow everybody out when it's ready. Yeah. And I think, you know, UI is a big thing. We need to get a user interface for, you know, fans that are going to be excited to participate. Satellite, maybe. It sounds like satellite could be this opportunity to help these folks understand. It is. I'm really excited. It's not, I wouldn't imagine that it's a transparent system either. You don't, like, you have to trust the labels. You have to trust that you, there's a trust factor involved. It depends in where you are in the value chain. Yeah. You know, if you're, I don't know if you're an independent artist, but if you're an independent artist, there's some pretty good transparency now. And I think that um, the labels are trying to get more transparent and i think super fan initiatives that lucian grange is launching and all these things everyone's understanding this and it eventually is going to come down to i think the bitcoin network just because totally going to want to put you know a very valuable copyright on a shit coin they're going to want a very secure network you know yeah exactly and you, you're building your life to your future and so it's like why not build it on the best network that was ever created um I think this is so cool and empowering. So, Tip, I want to ask you, you came from an, being an analyst and then all of a sudden now here you are. If you guys haven't seen Tip, you must see her on Sunday. And then Theo and Joe are going to, you're not performing. Theo and Joe are doing the, the festival tomorrow. So make sure we're all going to see each other on the dance floor having the best time. Uh, but is it, Tip performed live for the first time in Los Angeles and... Uh, had, did anybody see Tip perform at Pacific Bitcoin in Los Angeles? Oh my gosh, uh, Roger did. Yeah, did you cry? The whole fucking audience was crying. It was so beautiful. You must see her. She's so. Uh, it's just uh, you are so talented. And how the heck did you go from over here to la la la? I'm gonna go be an artist and create. Yeah, you just are, and and you're so good. How did that happen, Tip? Um. I, I don't know, like, um, I think I spent a lot of time, I guess, um, in the finance industry and it kind of just like, there was a lot of anger, I guess, that accumulated when I kind of understood Bitcoin, understood what um, we were doing in the fiat industry, kind of how everything is just so effed up, you know, so there's kind of a lot of, um, I guess, emotion to that, a lot of like, things that needed to come out and I guess I needed a way to, to funnel that somehow. Um, I'm, I'm not a musician. I probably did piano when I was young for like a couple of years, but um, I wrote a lot of poetry to my dad when I was younger. Um, we'd live in different countries. And so every time I'd leave him, I'd write him poetry about how I felt leaving him. So I think I kind of like reverted back to being a kid <laughs> after discovering Bitcoin. And yeah, I just thought that that was a great outlet to let him know how I feel. And so maybe writing poetry about Bitcoin is a great outlet for letting the world know about Bitcoin. Um, and I guess when I was performing, it's just, I don't know. I feel like a different person on stage, to be honest. Like when you know me, I'm kind of pretty shy. 
don't really like to talk that much, but um, one stage it's kind of like this other thing gets or like, you know, comes into my body and I'm just like, I need to get the message out there. It's much more important than me. It's much more important than my fears. And I just need to overcome it and just get the message out there. So yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's so powerful. I, I'm so, I'm so honored to know you and each of you. It's just, I love that we're getting to live our dream with our art, with our passion. And each one of us has something to contribute to the Bitcoin network. And I think a lot of people who are like, well, who who am I? How can I do anything that matters? And like every single thing we do matters. Your words matter. And we never know who's going to get influenced and dominoed by one conversation or one lyric or one tour or one interaction. And so I think it's super duper important that we each remember that in our own unique way. And don't sh don't be shy. I'm, I'm strangely shy. I actually am. My son told me like, mom, you need to start getting yourself out there more and promoting what you do because you're all about peace and love and Bitcoin. And if you're not confident in, you know, getting yourself out there, who's going to get the beautiful message? And I'm like, OK. And <laughs> so he's my I might love my children so much. God bless them. But would I would love for you guys to each. We've got just a couple minutes left. What's a piece of advice that you would give for folks in the audience or listening who are contemplating like, how can I get my message out there and how can I be creative and contribute to Bitcoin with my gift and with my dream? Well, if, if you're looking to pursue a career in music, I think I can speak on that. I think um, you have to love it more. You know, that's the competition. The people who love it the most are, the win are winning. And, uh, and it can get, yeah, and it can get really it can be very frustrating. I think that um, when you're talking to the value for value and you're seeing it small, but you know, it takes time to scale. And I think we're returning back to um, the Mo Austin era of bands where it takes three, four, five projects to really create a, a real network effect. And I think, you know, patience is super key, believing in yourself, super key. And, uh, you know, and I do think the Bitcoin network plays a major role for direct to fan super fan experience and i i'm excited to see it build and help build it along so um i think the narrative is really important um whatever you learn about bitcoin you know and you're sharing it to the rest of the world um maybe that's someone's first touch point about bitcoin so be very careful about kind of the first message that you put out there for me it was really hard to overcome kind of all the negativity like you know it's so easy to say f the government and all that stuff like the world's burning and focus on the problem but not many people there's only a few of us you know that really understand that bitcoin is the solution i guess focusing on the solution doing your research i know it's really hard but um it's a lot easier to be negative and divisive it's a lot harder to reflect on you know your role that you play in society and how we have contributed to that negativity as well so maybe reflect on that, try to be positive and try to spread that positive message out there. And that will be what makes us one. <laughs> I totally agree with Tip there. Uh, it's very easy to, um, if you want to share something and you look at that feeling, what the motivator is behind that. Sometimes it's that you, you feel like you want to help people and you do, but you also want to be recognized in a sort of perhaps a self-focused way. And I find that is one of the biggest uh, impediments to actually putting yourself out there, ironically, is uh, thinking about yourself. Um, if you can, what's been helpful for me is to try to shift the focus to like in service of this greater situation. And even in in the terms of art creation itself, um, if you if you love it, as Tim said, um, then that's what it's about. It's like all the work, all the reward is in the is in the doing. I find. You might think you want to be rewarded in some other way, but I don't think we really do. I think it's the doing, it's the process. So amen to that. Proof of work. Oh, wow. There it is. Wouldn't you know? Yeah. Um, I'd say maybe don't don't try and fit yourself around what you think you should be doing for Bitcoin, but plug, plug Bitcoin into what you're doing and let it supercharge what you're doing. Uh, and I'd, I'd, I'd encourage a lot of like, you know, independent artists to just look at the technology uh, and just try and get the hands dirty. Use these platforms, these great tools that are being built out. So shout out to Wave Lake, Sam and Michael there, and uh, Fountain, Oscar and Nick, and Ellen Beats, and and True Fans, and all these uh, new platforms that are popping up. 
Um, it's just so awesome to see how fast everything's moving. So I just say, get involved, jump in feet first. Yeah, feet first. I think it's super important. Greg Foss uh, at Miami Bitcoin a year and a half ago, he was just like, do it. Just get up and start participating. Like, of course, Bitcoin, we don't have to ask permission, but just put yourself out there. It's okay. It's going to take many, many times where you're having to understand what's working, what's not, what's resonating, what's not. Don't be shy, you know, and, and have that confidence. I'm going to, do you guys, I have time for one question from the audience. Does anybody have a question for the panel? Yes, no. It's okay if you don't, because I want, I have a question. Do you guys want to come meditate with all of us for a prayer for peace on Sunday morning? We're going to do just some chill chanting music in the park at Santa Catarina at about 7.45, right? So for about an hour before the conference starts, because I feel like obviously music is vibration. We're energy. We are all connected through energy, obviously the energy of the Bitcoin network. And so I think when we can come together, obviously when we're on the dance floor doing this together with you guys and with you on Sunday, it matters. And it also matters when we have focused attention together. And so I'd love to invite you guys all to to come and participate. I'll put something up on Twitter. Um, but you guys are so amazing. And I'm so honored and grateful to know each one of you and each one of you and keep shining. And you guys are the light that brings us joy to do what we do. So Yay, Bitcoin. Thanks for having us, you guys. Thanks, Thank you.